Gang wars and shootings have kept Sweden on tenterhooks for years. The situation is getting increasingly brutal. Suburbs, which are predominantly home to migrants, are often in focus. Suburbs like Rinkibu, in the north of the capital, Stockholm. Stefan Lindström has a plan for Rinkibu, a bridge to better integrate the residents there. The urban planner commissioned the structure. But the pedestrian and cycle bridge has divided opinion. On the one side is Rinkibu. There are a lot of people there with migrant backgrounds, with low income and a low level of education. And on the other side is Urshvik, a well-educated middle-class neighborhood. The bridge was built to connect the two areas. Businessman Ali Eren supports it. He thinks the bridge will help integrate his neighborhood, Rinkibu, into the city. He worries about the growing violence and says the state must do more. Bridges alone cannot resolve the situation. Hardly any money is being invested in schools. Instead, more and more are being privatized. And the laws are too lax. Young people know if they shoot someone before they're 18, the most they'll get is two or three years in prison. It's a catastrophe. A young man suddenly interrupts our conversation and threatens Eren. But Eren stands his ground. In Rinkibu, you have to earn your respect, he says. But he's naturally concerned about the increasing gun violence. In January, a boy was shot dead in this sushi bar in the south of Stockholm. Both shooter and victim were only 15. Swedish police are alarmed by this development and increasingly at a loss. We're dealing with younger and younger people. Some are children as young as 13 or 14. We try to intervene by informing child welfare, contacting the parents, or making home visits. But at some point, you can't reach these young people anymore. The far-right party, Sweden Democrats, is taking advantage of the violence by drumming up sentiment against Sweden's migrant communities. Stefan Lindström's bridge is also in the firing line. The right-wingers want it torn down. They believe it will bring Rinkibu's criminality to Orsvik. We contacted the SD, but the party declined to comment. Demolishing the bridge would be completely pointless. It will cost the taxpayer the equivalent of 10 million euros. That's madness. In Ursvik, there's little concern that youth violence could spill over to them via the new bridge. Most people are fairly relaxed about the dispute. The issue has been blown out of proportion by tabloids like Expressen. Here in this neighborhood, I haven't noticed much conflict at all. And before building the bridge, they set up a new police station in Rinkibu. Since then, it's been a lot quieter over there. Stefan Lindström is sure the bridge will have a positive effect. He hopes the uproar will die down once the bridge is finally finished. It's just better for social cohesion if people from different backgrounds meet in everyday life, instead of having one district for the poor, one for the middle class, and one for the rich. That doesn't help anyone. In a few weeks, the bridge will open to the public. Then, many Rinkibu and Orsvik residents will meet for the first time at the ribbon-cutting ceremony on the bridge. <laughs>